Today we're going to be unboxing five different versions of the Air Jordan 4 Black Cement. We'll be taking a look at this year's 2024 Retro, the 2019 Retro which has been a fan favorite, gotta love that Nike Air, the 2012 Retro, the 2008 CDP Retro, and the first ever Retro from 1999. Now unfortunately I don't have the OG in my collection but that's okay, we got a bunch of good images online so we'll be showing you guys some of those comparisons as well and we can't forget about the golf spikes from 2021. Oh yeah and if you didn't know by now, my name is DJ and this is is the DNA show. Hey. Now before we break down all the styles, cuts, and materials of these shoes, you know we gotta go over the history first. Back in 1989, Michael Jordan introduced another new model to the NBA, and that was the Air Jordan 4. The shoe retailed at $110, and it came out in four original colorways, the Fire Red 4s, the Military Blue 4s, the White Cement 4s, and the Black Cement 4s. But before we go too deep into the Air Jordan 4, we gotta talk about the Air Jordan 3. Back in 87-88, Tinker Hatfield came on the scene as the new designer for brand Jordan. During this time, MJ was kinda on the fence if he wanted to stay with Nike or not, saying that he wasn't too impressed with the Air Jordan 2s, and when Tinker Hatfield designed the Air Jordan 3, it changed the game forever. We all remember the iconic memories of him jumping from the free throw line in the white cement 3s, or even shoes being displayed in classic commercials like the ones we saw with Spike Lee. So I'm sure you're wondering why are we talking so much about the 3s when this video is about the 4s? As you can see right here, with the two shoes side by side, they look very similar. It's just more of an upgraded version. You have additions of the mesh on the side, the new material uppers, the back tab similarities with extensions, and as you can see right here, the midsole side profile similarities as well. Michael Jordan brought out the Black Cement Air Jordan 4s during the All-Star game, and he was definitely turning heads in that time. And then later in the season, we saw him wearing those same shoes in game five of the first round of the NBA playoffs. And in that game, that's when he made the shot. The Bulls were down by a point. There was one possession left. They had an inbound pass, and you know the ball was going to Michael Jordan. He pulled up around the free throw line, made the shot, and everybody went crazy. So I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that kind of cemented that shoe in history. <laughs> you get it? Now following the release in 89, 10 years later we saw the Air Jordan 4 hit the streets again, but this time they did it with a twist. The Black Cement Air Jordan 4s came out and the White Cement Air Jordan 4s came out, but we also saw the Columbia and the Oreo Air Jordan 4s as well. And just a side note for my old heads out there, y'all remember the Bling Bling 4s? <laughs> Those things were nice. I wish my pair didn't crumble. But one thing a lot of people noticed during that time the jump man on the back tab there was no longer nike air on it for those that don't know on september 9th 1997 nike and jordan brand announced that the original brand jordan was now becoming jordan brand and what exactly did that mean jordan brand was becoming its own entity within the company which was causing more ownership and i'm telling you right now that was one of the most iconic moves for sneaker history and because of that we might have never seen collaborations player exclusives new colorways packages there were so many things that came after that announcement just within the first five to ten years and i bring all that up so you guys understand the significance around the 1999 pair and all the things that were happening during that time and why the nike era was so cherished on a sneaker like this so what we're going to do now is run through all the details of the new modern day retro 2024 version reimagined air jordan 4 black cement bread whatever you like to call it and we're going to take these and compare them with the different eras over the years and work our way all the way back to the 1999 pair so you guys can see the differences between these when it comes to cuts, materials, and how these are compared to the original pair from 1989. So over here we have the reimagined 2024 version, and over here we have the 2019 retro with the Nike Air on the back, and this one in particular is a lot of people's favorites. Looking at the lid of the box, you can see everything is flipped, everything is opposite, so you got black on the bottom, cement print on the top, cement on the bottom, black on the top, and then the same thing right here, your logos, everything is pretty much identical, red Jumpman, white flight. Now one big switch up that I did like when it comes to the reimagined is they actually added the Nike Air on the front of the lid and on the back of the lid. And if you look at these, even though they had Nike Air on the back tabs, they still had the Jumpman with the Air branding on the lid. Now looking at the size tag, this one reads Air Jordan 4 Retro Black Fire Red Cement Gray. Retail was $200. Now looking at the 2024 Retro, same thing here, Air Jordan 4 Retro Black Fire Red Cement Gray. And the retail on these is supposed to be $215. So the retail price has basically doubled from the OG to current time. Now lifting off the lid of the Box right here on the new retro we have the all over cement print paper and then we got the shoe oh we got the shoe now Jordan brand was definitely checking a lot of boxes when it comes to these right here adding the hang tag and all that but I'm telling you one thing I wish they had the retro card if they had this oh my gosh it would set these things over the top but we'll talk about that a little bit later now opening up the 2019 pair right here taking off the lid same thing you got the red on the inside now this one actually has 
the black plastic paper, and then you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. So as you can see right here, side by side, color blocking looks the same, but I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of differences. So we're gonna start with the bottom of the shoe and work our way up, and then we'll kind of repeat that cycle as we go through different comparisons from different eras. Now looking at the outside right here, you can see standard Air Jordan 4 bottom, and this is another feature that we first saw on the Air Jordan 4, and that was the herringbone traction that Tinker decided to add to the bottom of the shoe. So these essentially come with three different colors on the bottom. You have red on the front and back end, and then the red with your Nike branding. You have white with the center on the midfoot, and then the ball of the foot and the front end, and then your gray all throughout the center of the foot as well. Now the rubber wraps up to the side of the foot, as you can see right here, which was that difference that we saw between the Air Jordan 3s, and it also goes up around the front end, around the toe, and that's gonna be featured in that same cement gray color as the outsole with the gray stitch around the toe. Now when it comes to the paint job on these, you got black paint on the front end, and there's gonna be a two-tone top and bottom half, different colors, kind of that yin-yang vibe. You got black on the top end, white on the bottom end, and then you have a white air unit here on the 2024 pair and a white air unit here on the 2019 pair. So overall for the outsoles and the midsoles, everything is pretty much looking the same on that aspect. Now when it comes to the upper, there are a lot of differences between these shoes. So let's go ahead and get into it. Obviously, first one, I don't know if it's an elephant in the room or not, but <laughs> you can tell you got two completely different materials on the shoes. Now the original Air Jordan 4 from 1989, those came with a Durabuck material on the upper. We were so used to seeing leather on the uppers when it comes to the ones, twos, and threes. So this was definitely a huge switch up for the brand and the presentation of the shoe, saying that the fire red, the white cements, and the militaries were all leather on the upper. And later on throughout the years, as we saw more retros and iterations moving towards sustainability, we then started to see a synthetic nubuck being featured on the upper on the Air Jordan retros. And now in 2024, this is the first ever black cement for releasing with the leather on the upper and the reimagined version. Now when it comes to the cuts on these two shoes, you can clearly see a difference, and this will be the same similarity through all the pairs with the nubuck on the upper, and that's because the material is just simply different. This one has more of a rough edge finish on the leather, and then obviously it's thicker, and there's a lot of different variables on that as well. So you'll definitely see that consistency throughout the comparisons later in the video, so hopefully we don't need to bring that one up as much. Now when it comes to the actual shape of the shoe and how they cut the shoe and made the different shapes of the shoe, you can see these two shoes have a huge difference on that aspect. The front of the toe on the 2024 retro is a lot slimmer and honestly very similar to the SB Air Jordan 4 that came out last year. This is something that people love now in current time, but it's also slowly getting away from the original from 1989. Now going to the shape of the retro from 2019, this one's a lot more boxy and square on the front end and everybody in current time is looking for that OG style and OG cut. So if anything, no matter what, this one still is a better version when it comes to the shape, giving us that OG vibe. Now looking at the mesh in the nets on the side and the front end of the shoe around the toe, you can see there's a slight difference when it comes to the overall shade and definitely the mesh behind the nets. And then also the spacing, giving you kind of a bigger net hole on the 2024 retro. These come standard with a pair of all black flat laces, no additional laces, but you do have hang tags. Obviously this one is flipped, orange like your classic OGs, and then black giving you that more reimagined version. Now on the tongue of these two shoes, when you put them side by side, honestly, these patches look damn near the same. Like there's really not that much of a difference. I feel like the reimagined, the red is just a little bit deeper on the reimagined compared to the 2019. But besides that, everything pretty much looks identical there. Now going to the actual tongue right here, you have a tumbled leather tongue, and then the leather is actually folded over to the back end, and from the front side, this is what I always talk about, how you can see OGs. You should never be able to see the red from the front. This is very similar to the OG, but the thing that they did mess up on is the actual tongue. It's more like the SB tongue and not the OG, which this one is, and it's more slim like the OG tongue. It just doesn't have that same finish on the front end of the shoe around the top of the tongue here. You can actually see the red from that front area which really it should be folded back a little bit behind it and sticking up. And if you look at the OGs, you can actually see it's kind of like pointy a little bit as well. I talked about this before in the review. The leather makes the shoe look a little bit more puffy, a little bit more bubbly because this new buck is, you know, more sleek and it's kind of making things blend together a little bit. But overall, the 2024 retro definitely has a higher stance and cut on it. And that's again, something similar to the original from 1989. Now, when it comes to the inside on the collar, you have all gray here, everything similar there. And then inside of there, you have an all red sock liner with the black Nike Air. And that's gonna be the same thing here on this retro because what? You got the Nike Air on the bottom, the Nike Air on the back, which means you have Nike Air on the inside. Side note. They got the polyurethane insoles. These things are way more comfortable 
great addition Jordan brand. Now when it comes to the two back tabs on these sneakers and saying that they've been retro about five years apart, there's gonna be a lot of similarities when it comes to the shape, the color, and how they overall fit on the shoe. And these look very, very similar as well. But going back to the actual shape of the sneaker, just below that on the 24 retro, there's a bigger curve on the heel, giving you that round shape. And that's again, similar to the OG. You guys will definitely see what I'm talking about when we start comparing the other retros and how they shape the back end of the shoe because it became really flat over the years. So that's a pretty solid look of the two shoes side by side and how they compare against each other. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section when it comes to these in particular and I had to see what everybody else thinks because honestly I've been having a hard time figuring out which one I like the most so let me know which one you guys like but again if you guys haven't already make sure you follow me on IG I post a poll there and then I share all the results here on the channel 39% of the people chose the 2024 retro and 61% of the people chose the 2019 do you think those poll results were pretty accurate let me know down below in the comment section let's take it to the next shoe all right right here we have the 2012 retro Vividly remember these times, this was crazy. These actually went to outlets and they were sitting for a while at outlets. And I, was, I remember copying multiple pairs of these, like rocking them over the years. I got a beater pair somewhere, I'll show you guys. But either way, the box right here, similar to that OG vibe, you got the cement on the bottom. Same thing, black lid, red, white flight, everything the same there. And then you got the Jumpman instead of the Nike Air. And then these ones actually had a red tag and it says Air Jordan 4 Retro black cement gray fire red same thing right there but a retail on them was 160 bucks so from 2012 to 2019 the retail went from 160 dollars to 200 dollars that's a pretty big jump if you ask me now lift and open the lid of the box right here you have your all black paper and then you got the shoe oh you got the shoe so i want to compare the 2012 retro to the 2019 retro because obviously the materials are similar but there were a lot of switch ups on these two because you had jordan branding and you had nike branding which changes things and then the cut because again remember the 2019 retro was a part of the remastered series and the 2012 retro was just a retro also take note during this time in 2012 this was like the slow fall off of jordan brand and we saw yeezy and other brands starting to come into play and even nike basketball was starting to take over so looking at the bottom of the two shoes again everything identical here for the most part but again like i said big switch up you have the nike branding on this one because again nike air and then a jump man here because this was a retro without the nike air branding now looking at the midsoles on these two shoes everything does look very similar but if you look at the 2012 retro you can see the black paint is actually more of like a matte finish compared to of a satin kind of glossier finish on the 2019 retro now the overall shape of these two shoes is kind of similar and it's actually interesting because i feel like the 2012 is a little bit more sleek in the toe compared to the 2019 it became a little bit more boxy and started to turn up a little bit on the front end of the shoe but when you look at the actual materials on these two shoes the 2012 feels a lot more like a suede version compared to the 2019 feeling more like a new buck version another thing to notice on these two shoes is going to be the nets and it's not just like the color or the shape or anything it's actually the positioning of the shoe during this time in the late 2000s early 2010 era the nets on the air jordan 4 started to go a lot more vertical on those retros and a lot of people are happy to see that they brought the diagonal nets back on the remastered series and that's what we saw here on the 2019 version and you hear it all the time in the comment section with people that don't know much about sneakers oh your shoes are fake no it's different eras different generations different cuts so this is definitely a huge indicator on the era of the sneaker as well and then obviously there's going to be other variables as well but that's definitely something a lot of sneaker has noticed if you've been collecting for 10 plus years now when it comes to the arms of the shoe and the side piece here this was great but it's old so it's starting to yellow a little bit so you're going to see that little sign of aging putting them side by side you can see they also had a switch up on here they took away a little piece to the air jordan 4 that everybody didn't really know that they loved so much until it was gone. If you look really close at the front end right here on the gray tabs, you can see there's a small triangle on the 2019 retro, and then you have nothing here on the sides when it comes to the 2012 version. This was something that was done on previous retros before this version as well, but I wanted to point that out for you because again, if you're looking at things for why the shoe is fake or differences between shoes over the years, that's another indicator as well. Now, remember we talked about the nets getting bigger on the 2024 version? Look at the nets and how 
how small and refined they are on the 2012 version compared to the 2019 version. That alone is showing you a huge difference. Now look at the difference of the 2012 version next to the 2024 version. Huge difference. Now these again come standard with a pair of all black flat laces. And when it comes to the tag on these, it actually does look different. The white text down below is similar, but the actual Jumpman on the 2012 pair, it looks kind of like pixelated. And that's just based on what type of stitching pattern they decided to use and how it came out with the final product. Now again, there's gonna be some aging on the 2012 pair, so it does look slightly faded but I think overall first came out I do remember it being just a little bit lighter and not as vibrant as these so you can see obviously they're different shade color but the overall shape of the tongues is pretty similar on that aspect now the color of these two shoes is gonna be in that same standard gray and then on the sock liner on the 2012 retro you have an all red sock liner with a white Jumpman we have Jumpman on the bottom Jumpman on the back so that means what we got to have Jumpman on the insole now speaking of the back tabs on these two shoes obviously yes you got Nike Air you got Jumpman and this one actually has a jump man with no air underneath it another difference if you look at the actual shape and cut of the shoe you can see it's higher on the 2019 retro when it comes to the actual material that goes up to the tab and then it has a little bit more of a roundness to it so this one is like more of a slimmer condensed kind of compressed version compared to the 2019 version and this was something that we were happy about in this time because it was getting closer to that original cut and style that we had because if you guys remember you know 2006 7 eight, nine, all those times when we saw the Mars Blackman fours and the military fours and the mist fours and all the different fours that were coming out during that time, those things were like super flat, super pancake down. Everything was condensed and really slim. And don't get me wrong, we all loved it during those moments. But as we compare it over the years, we're like, hey, low key, I want the OG cut. And then the final thing to notice here, as you can see, hang tag is gonna be different. This is gonna be translucent on the outside, a thicker plastic obviously is yellowing from time, and then you have your Jordan branding here, and then the air underneath that. I showed you guys this earlier when it comes to the nets, but obviously, as you can see, with the toe shape, the shape of the shoe, the profile shot, the height of the materials, the, the obviously the materials, the different branding hits, the tongue, the thickness, there's a lot of differences when it comes to these two shoes. To the untrained sneakerhead eye, they're gonna be like, oh, that's the same shoe. But to us, we're gonna be like, bro, there's so many different things when it comes to these two shoes. So hopefully that helps you guys get a better look at these compared to the new version. And then obviously the 2019 version and how they changed so many things just over the past, you know, 10, 12 years. Oh yeah, and by the way, the 2012 pair and the 2019 pair, neither came with a retro card. All I'm saying is, if it's an OG colorway, at least bring the retro card back for the OG. Like, or like give us a new design or something. I don't know, but it's gotta be one through 23. I don't want it to be like one through 38 and all them extra numbers. Ugh, that, that, that wouldn't be good. That wouldn't be just one through 23. Give us a new version of the retro card. Come on, Jordan Brand. I know you see this. All right, right here we have half of the CDP pack. The other half is already taken off, but this pack is the countdown pack. If you look on the box right here, this is the side of the fours box, but you got one through three, four, da, 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 and the other side, one through 23. Well, 22. It was a super dope concept 2008 oh my gosh i remember this time so vividly i used to have every single pack every single model but then i got rid of the 19s because i have the og still so i was like not really needing to keep both it's the jordan 19s but either way when it comes to this this was another version of the bread or the black cement air jordan 4s and honestly kind of like the introduction to the bread fours the black cement fours from 99, which we'll get into in a bit, those were still the black cement fours. And these came out and then we saw like, you know, bread 11s, those came out the same year. And we saw other shoes and it became like this bread thing. So I remember hearing that like growing up because I never called bread 11s bread 11s. I always called them like playoff 11s when I was a little kid and stuff. So interesting times, different things were shifting in the culture. The Jordan 4 was coming back hot. We saw a lot of cool models and retros the years before that. So everybody was really hyping this stuff up. And honestly, I was definitely on that train as well. Loving this shoe. Flying the lid back right here, you have an all white paper and embossed into the paper, you actually have all the Jordan retros into there so hopefully you guys can see that with the details this was a really dope touch something that we had all loved at the time 
And then flipping that back, you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. And before I forget, the retail on this package was $310, so split the pack down half, but typically the worst half of the pack, people like valued that as less. So people would always say like, it was like 200 bucks for one and 110 for the other, you name it, whatever. But either way, <laughs> that's what it was. So besides the fact that this sneaker is cooked, I'm still gonna talk about it because again, these were a staple back in 2008. Looking at the outsoles, everything is identical here minus the dirt you got the same thing red gray and white but one thing that was different on these compared to this retro the stars i vividly remember during this time the stars were there obviously you can see there's wear but just looking at the stars in this area of the shoe they're not as like prominent they don't stick out as much they weren't so defined and then when you look at the stars on the retro from 2012 very, very aggressive. They stick out, they're out there. They have a lot more texture to the shoe. This was something that I definitely noticed during that time. It's something that was similar and that definitely made me think about it. The 24 retro, the stars are aggressive and then the 2019 retro, the stars are aggressive. So I don't know exactly what the stars looked like on the 89 pair, but what I can say is there's a lot of similarities between 24, 19, and 2012. We'll get into the 1999 pair in a second. So looking at the midsoles right here, everything's gonna be the same. You got your black paint here, and then your two-tone on the back half, black on the top, white on the bottom with your white air unit, and then going to the upper. But if you look at the nets in particular, you can see these definitely have a lot of similarities, but the overall material on these two shoes very, very different. The 2008 pair has more of that new buck feel to it, a lot thinner or more refined, and that's gonna be similar to the 2019 pair. The 2012 pair is pretty much like an outlier when it comes to the materials on the different shoes over the years, and then obviously the reimagining with the leather. Look at the gray tab right here on the sides. If you notice, there's actually no triangle here in that area. And then another thing to pay attention to as well, the tabs are actually made out of different materials. This one's more of a harder plastic on the 2008 pair on the front end of the toe, and it's not really losing its color. But if you look at the back end, it's more of a rubber-like material, similar to the arms on the side of the foot, and it's starting to age over time and turn yellow. Now these normally come with a pair of all black flat laces, but they were switched out with some SB laces. Besides that, looking at the tongue and the branding on here, that's gonna be very similar to the 2012 pair when it comes to, like I said, that pixelated look and how they decided to stitch it. And I think one thing I can say is they've definitely improved the Jumpman over the years. Cause you guys all remember during that time, the Jordan threes and the Jordan fives and stuff like that. What did they have? The butt crack. Everybody remembers the butt crack on the Jordans. And now they're starting to refine that and improve on the stitching and giving you a better looking logo when it comes to presentation on all the new retro models. Now looking at the tongue and the cut of these two shoes, you can see very similar as well. You can see the actual red from the front, the red line right here. That's gonna be the same thing on all these retro style cuts. And then on the back end, you got that Air Jordan branding, white tab, black text. And then on the sock liner, it actually has an embroidered patch inside of here. And it says 1985, and then it says 2008, and it says 23 in between that with a red Jumpman. And this is gonna be on both of the insoles. So all the CDP pack sneakers that came in that pack had these insoles. And again, this was another little iconic touch to the shoe and a nice timestamp for collectors. Now going to the back of these two shoes, as you can see, the tabs look very similar and then the cuts of the materials down low, there's a small gap in between right there when it comes to the midsole and then the tab. You can see it's like not even thick as my finger right here. But on the other ones, it's a higher cut and it's got more of a roundness to it. Remember earlier in the video, we talked about how the shoe is a lot more flat and it doesn't bow on the back end of the shoe. This is what I was talking about. You see retros from generations like this, and then when you put them next to the 2024 retro, you can see a drastic difference when it comes to the cuts and overall height of the shoe as well. Okay, so now when it comes to this one, I have a replacement box, but I wanted to keep that vibe of the OG box. So the OG box did look like this. I'll pop up a picture of it so you guys can see the similarities, but this is actually a Jordan 13 retro box. The size tag was actually silver to match the box, and that size tag read Air Jordan 4 retro black cement gray. Now these came out in 1999 and what I saw online was these were retailing at $100. Correct me if I'm wrong down below in the comment section because I didn't get my 1999 pair until like 2007 or eight. I don't remember which year I got it. But either way, I had to work a trade for the shoe so I actually didn't buy them or 
pay retail, whatever you want to call it, but I don't remember the actual retail price. So let me know down below. I'm assuming it was anywhere from 100 to $120. But again, another price jump from 100 bucks in 1999 to $155 in the pack in 2008. And obviously, yes, I understand what inflation is. Now lifting open the lid of the box, you got your all white paper and I go, <laughs> We got the retro car, baby. I still got the retro car. I got a lot of these retro cars, but I don't know about you, but who remembers collecting all the retro? I got a stack of retro cars over there. You don't believe me? This is just some of them, bro. Hold on. Let's, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this was a good time. You remember these retro cars? I know you guys see them. I know you remember this era. Oh my gosh. This is, hey, great time to be a collector. Peeling back the paper, you got the shoe. Oh, you got the shoe. All right, all right, I'm sorry. I gotta talk about the retro cars just a little bit more. I don't know about you, but if you were a collector during this time, maybe I was the only one, but I'm sure I remember a lot of people that I was around me in my circle. The retro card, it had the different models on here and it had different colorways. So each retro card didn't all feature the same colorways. And as the shoes were coming out, new models were coming out over the years as well so during this time 18s you see what i'm saying and you would see different things with different shoes that were coming out but one thing that a lot of people did was they would scribble out or circle or x out or whatever you like to say the different numbers on the retro card and try to collect all the numbers. Being on the hunt for sneakers and meeting people and seeing who has, it's like Pokemon or whatever you wanna say, right? It's the same concept, like seeing your friend's retro card and how many he you know, scratched off and the ones that you got and you guys are trading to help each other get shoes in each other's collections and everybody's showing love and people aren't taxing each other. Like I said, this was a great time to be a collector. All right, all right, I'm done with the retro card for now. Now when it comes to these, 1999. I don't know where I should begin when it comes to the comparison. So I'm gonna pull out the 2019 pair and then I'm gonna pull out the 2024 pair because those feature the Nike Air and we've seen a lot of differences between the retros with the Jumpmans. And don't worry, at the end of the video, I'll be showing you guys all the shoes side by side lined up, but I think this one just kind of makes the most sense. Looking at the bottom, Nike branding all throughout. You got your red on the front. Everything with the color blocking is similar. Just gonna have a little bit of bleeding because of age. And then like I was talking about earlier in the video, these, they've been around the block, but the stars, even on the front of the toe, you can see it's not as aggressive. And when I look at pictures of pairs from 1989, it looks like, it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like it's not as aggressive when it comes to the stars as we see on the new modern day retros. So I like how they did that on a 99 pair, keeping it similar to the OG. Now, when I'm looking at the midsoles on these sneakers, again, pretty similar on these two. This one is obviously showing a lot of signs of age and the air unit is very fogged up, but either way, everything is pretty much similar to that aspect as well. Now, when I'm looking at the uppers and the materials, I think this is one piece that looks really, really dope on the 1999 pair. And it's the finish on the new buck in the cut. You can see it kind of has like that white finish to it. And it just looks like that because of time, because of wear, because of all these different elements. And I remember when the 2019 pair came out, a lot of people were actually customizing the shoe and adding that white line around the sneaker to kind of give it more of that vintage and that age look to the shoe. And I think a lot of people did that because they liked that rough edge finish. And I think that's where they incorporated it in the 2024 retro and brought that vibe back, even though it's on leather, but it gives you that, that element of separation on the sneaker, allowing you to see the different panels on the shoes, saying that they're all black and especially with it to be in that new bug vibe and it's just kind of like like really blending together. This helps separate the shoe and give it more character on these and definitely on the same thing on the 24 retro. Now these again come standard with a pair of flat black laces and in just looking from the profile shot, if I lift the shoe up like this, and these two shoes up like that, you can see that you can't see the red from the front, right? It's all gonna be on the back side of the tongue. Now, like I was talking about in comparison to the other tongues from 2008 and 2012, if you look at the Jumpman here, it's a lot more kind of like, I would say pixelated or whatever you wanna say, not as finely stitched. And you can definitely see the difference here between the 2019 pair and the 99 or even the 24 pair and the 99. And then also another thing when it comes to the net on the side and the front end around the tongue, it's gonna be thicker and it's gonna kind of have like, like a gooey look to it, right? And I don't know if that's because of age, but also at the same time, it's a little bit 
bit more bold and rounded. And if you notice on these ones, they actually kind of have like these little nipples on them all throughout the nets. And these one is more flat and it's kind of rounded and puffy and bubbly throughout those areas. Now looking at the back end of these shoes, you can see you got your Nike Air tabs. Everything is going to be very, very similar. But looking at this pair, it's a lot more flat on the 1999 pair. And I would say, uh, if you look at the side right there, and then you see what I'm saying when I was talking about flat and how it kind of gets very, very slim on that area. And they brought the bubble back. And it's kind of extended on the back end of the shoe on the 2024 pair. That side by side, you can vividly see the difference between the overall shapes and the cuts and how they decided to put the tabs back on there and make it look like the OG. Another thing I cannot forget to mention is gonna be the gray tabs right here in the eye holes. Like I talked about, 2008 and 2012, they didn't have those little triangles on the side. Now, if you look at this pair, it has that, and that's what? Similar to the OG in 1989. And they stayed consistent on all the retro pairs with the Nike Air on the shoes. So if you notice any of the pairs, these three, they all have that same consistency on them. And then the pairs with the Jumpmans on them, they actually don't have the triangles on them. So again, another little fun fact when it comes to just how they decided to create the shoes and create differences between the models over the years. Now I know that was definitely a lot to digest when it comes to this video and these comparisons and the different models and cuts and everything like that. And trust me, there were some things that were still left out. We didn't even talk about the sock liners and what they used on the materials and how they Things change with the shape of midsole and outsole and all those different things but for the most part I think we covered a lot and I hope you guys enjoyed this now I did some poll results like you guys saw earlier in the video I compared each shoe against the new retro right here and honestly some of these results were pretty shocking when it comes to the 24 versus the 2019 we had 39% on the 24 and 61% on the 2019 now when we go to the 2012 pair 35% to 65% on the new retro and I can understand why no Nike Air switch up of materials makes sense now this one I'm interested. There's a lot of sentimental value for the 2008 pair. We had 36% for the 2008 CDP and we had 64% on the new retro. And I understand the new 2024 retro is the hot thing on the market, so I get that as well. But I'm very interested to see how these compare to the 1999 pair because this is essentially like what people wanted as a remastered or a reimagined version. 52% of the people chose the new retro and 48% of the people chose the old retro from 1999. I get it, the shoe's not wearable and all those things, but there's no way I'm picking the new retro over the old retro. So it's crazy to see after all these years from 1999 and all the retro iterations in between, and then obviously the original from 1989, the tides have slowly changed over the years, materials and cuts have changed over the years, which makes me very interested to see what this shoe could potentially look like another 10 or 20 years from now. So again, I hope this video was helpful, and if you guys enjoyed this, make sure you guys hit that like button, and if you made it all the way to the end of this video, drop a comment down below in the comment section saying, and Hakuna Matata. It means no worries. I would never let you down. Yo, if you made it to the end of this video and want to take your collection to the next level, I built a full community with private meetups with me and other members in the community as well. So if you want to be a part of that and get early access or behind the scene looks on how I run my businesses, it's definitely going to be a place where I can help you scale your collection and potentially start investing in other things outside of sneakers like real estate. So hit the link down below in the description and get signed up and I'll see you guys on the inside. That's in my DNA. Hey, the hey, only pop. choice I like to make what I'm aware of. I one would one never one. let you down. That's in my DNA. The only choice I like to make what I'm aware today. I was made for it. It's in the DNA.